Smurfs and duo queuing are gone for good? Hello everyone and welcome back to another Pro Guys video. My name is Dan and today we'll be talking about some huge rank changes that Riot has in store for the preseason, as well as some other changes that have been implemented already. Smurfing is being fixed. We know who is getting the victorious skin, season rewards have been previewed, duoing and high elo is off the table, and so much more. First, let's start things off by breaking down this week's dev blog regarding the end of this season and start of the next. Most of the dev blogs this year have been for the sake of transparency and have shown us the inner workings of Riot's balance and design teams, so it's nice to get back to talking about the state of competitive gameplay. This blog serves to both review what's been done and talk about changes to come. Let's look at the season goals for 2020, changes they've made in line with those goals and what they're still in the process of implementing. Goal 1. Improve queue matchmaking quality without compromising queue time and availability. In line with this goal, all of the following changes have already been shipped. Autofill disparity between teams has been reduced to under 5%. Pre-made disparity has gone from over 50% to under 5%. MMR clamps have been adjusted on the very top and bottom of the ladder to eliminate queues that went on forever. A new matchmaking methodology has been put in place leading to faster matchmaking while also keeping relatively even skill levels in normal games. This change will be coming to Ranked in the preseason. Goal 2. Improve transparency around Ranked and matchmaking system. This change is in progress and is aimed at matching you with players who are of a similar rank, so hopefully no more Silver 3 and Gold 2 players in the same game. Goal 3. Improve progression satisfaction and skill expression in our systems. All of these changes are in progress and will be released in preseason. No more divisional promotions. You want a promo series when going from Gold 3 to Gold 2, but you will still have a promotion series between tiers, Gold, Plat, Diamond. No more duoing in Master Plus, structured unlock of Master Plus tiers. From the start of the season, Master, Grandmaster, and Challenger will all be open at certain thresholds. Make rewards more recognizable and relevant for time spent in League. Also in progress, this one aims to update the victorious thematic and content. The main thing is to bring the base skins up a notch and to add chromas for players above gold, the minimum requirement for the skin. Players can play with and find others they want to play with. Both of these goals have been shipped. Flex restrictions have been removed, allowing anyone to queue with their friends in flex. This has led to a huge increase in flex games in all regions. The first iteration of Clash Build a Team has been put in, allowing you to enlist as a free agent and be picked up by friends and friends of friends. The changes in place have already had a huge impact on improving quality of life in League, so expect the coming ones to push that even further. So let's talk about those a bit more in depth. The first big one is the removal of Division Promo Series. While promos were initially implemented to provide an exciting set of games to determine if you would make it to higher ELO as you climbed the ladder, the result was less about excitement and more about stress. At best, you were relieved you won, and at worst, you were frustrated, especially if you lost the same promotion series several times in a row. Even with solutions such as getting a free win the next time you reached promotions after failing them before, they have remained an issue, so they have to go. To go with this change, LP will roll over when you promote, and players that have freshly promoted will be eligible for demotion immediately, so no more grace period. This change is targeted at the divisional level, and tier promotions, gold to plat, plat to diamond, etc., will still exist, as those are pretty big feats and deserve the compelling series of games. This is one of the biggest changes they're making, and any feedback from the community helps them to shape the system for the best player experience possible, so be sure to let them know what you think. Two more of the core goals for 2020 were increasing overall matchmaking quality, as well as transparency of the ranked system. While MMR is the primary factor when putting players together, there will be a new layer of guardrails called Ranked Informed Matchmaking. While MMR hasn't been a horrible system for matching players, it's an invisible number, so actually being able to see that teams are close in rank, the number you can see will provide a sense of relief to players that are tired of seeing one player on their team that is an entire tier below the rest of their team. Ranked seeding has been tested to help better place more accurately after their first ranked games of the season, hopefully leading to an overall more consistent experience. To dumb it down a bit, imagine a player of silver skill having a good set of promo games and being accidentally placed in high gold or plat they would end up doing pretty poorly overall, feed in a ton of games, and end up losing their way back down to silver. The goal of improving on ranked seeding will hopefully cut down on that a lot. And while tests so far have done a better job than the current system, it's not good enough, and the second iteration will be rolling out in preseason. 
Moving on to the big boy leagues, the Apex tier Master Plus has been a target of some changes to really show that only the best players belong there. The first experimental change is to remove duo queue for all players that have climbed to this tier. For the rest of the ladder, balancing duos on each team is pretty easy, but at the highest level there aren't enough players to ensure each team has the same amount of duos, and having two non-duoed bot laners against two pro bot laners that are duoed can completely decide the fate of the match. The pros of social climbers enjoying playing with a buddy doesn't outweigh the pain this disparity can cause, and so this change is seen as a necessity in bringing back a healthier ecosystem at the highest tier. The second change is aimed at the start of the season. In previous years, Master, Grandmaster, and Challenger unlocked at fixed points in the early season, leading to situations where players ended up in an elo that they didn't belong, just due to their early season lucky grind. This season, all of the Apex tier will be unlocked at the start of the season, with Master being immediately above Diamond 1, Grandmaster being 200 LP, and Challenger being 500 LP. The last change targeted at this tier is improving the autofill experience without making queues unbearably long. When you look at a Challenger game and see an autofilled player against a player on their main role, the difference is painfully obvious. There's currently no planned experiments to find a solution, but the problem is being investigated, and the goal is reaching a point where all matches are determined by who performs best, not which team has more or less imbalances. Moving on from that, the end of season is coming, and with it, the yearly Victorious skin is on the way. While the league competitive scene has evolved rapidly, the Victorious rewards have not. And with how hard we all work to reach our goals for the season, Riot knows we deserve better and is striving to bring those rewards up to standard. In addition to the thematic being improved on, players will receive chromas for each tier above gold they achieve in the season. The first official season of Clash is also coming to an end, with icons, logos, and banners being given out to players based on how much they played and how well they did in those games. If you haven't participated in Clash very much and find yourself just short of the next tier of rewards, make sure to enter the World's Clash event. This will be two weekends during Worlds that offer more victory points than Standard Clash. In 2021, Clash progression will be revisited, expanding on the system that was started this year. The idea is for it to be more than just another way to play League. It should feel like a meaningful, memorable way of playing with your friends as a team. Just like with other changes, your feedback can help to shape this into the best possible experience for us as players, so be sure to let Riot know how you feel about Clash so far. That's all that was covered in the dev blog. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to never miss out on any of these updates. In line with the same goals as the changes listed in the dev blog, Mark Yetter said on Twitter that an upgrade to the matchmaking system would help to group Smurfs by taking both current rank and MMR into account. One of the main benefits is grouping Smurfs together, leading to a much healthier environment in the lower elos where a Smurf can single-handedly decide some games. That pretty much covers all of the changes that will be coming for future seasons, but don't let all the excitement take away from the rewards we're going to be getting for the current year. The Victorious skin has been teased, and judging by the gun we see, it looks to be Lucian, which makes perfect sense as he's been an extremely dominant pick as a triple flex to all three lanes. Additionally, as always, we'll be receiving icons as well as a banner trim for lobbies. New to this season, we'll be receiving a free Eternal from Series 1. And that is all we have for you covering all these exciting ranked updates. Be sure to sub to the channel so you can stay up to date with our videos and never find yourself out of the loop. See you all back in the next video, but until then, good luck out on the rift and stay safe out there.